All right, so uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything flashy to show off because I was just working on making something faster. Uh, so I'll just talk about what I did. Um, so for my Dev Jam project, I chose to take a look at making Alec perform better when handling large network topologies. Um, so what problem was I trying to address? Uh, two of Alec's clustering engines, the DBSCAN engine and the TensorFlow engine, both depend on uh, time and space distances between faults on an inventory topology graph. Uh, the time delta between two alarms is really trivial to calculate because it's just a simple difference between uh, two absolute values, so we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, however, the distance calculation is much harder to compute since two nodes with faults on them may have several paths to each other uh, and the links on each path might have different costs. So we need to compute the shortest path between the nodes with faults on them to come up with a fair distance value to use when comparing. It turns out that that distance computation, at least in the case of the dbscan engine, is uh, where a significant portion of the time for clustering is spent. And the current uh, method we use to uh, calculate the distance is to run Dijkstra's algorithm against all the nodes with faults on them. And that ends up computing the distance from node, those nodes to every other node on the graph, even nodes that don't have faults on them that we don't care about. Um, and this ends up using a lot of memory and takes a really long time to compute. So for example, if you had a graph with 500,000 inventory nodes and 200 of those nodes had faults on them, that would res result in 100 million distance computations being calculated and cached every time that a correlation uh, interval ticks. Uh, as far as real world implications for this, what's that? Um, well, we'll get to that. Uh, so the distance computation problem we just described causes two issues when applied to a large network topology. Uh, firstly, since we cache all the results, um, the heap size in ALEC needs to grow very quickly uh, as a result of a large graph. Uh, so previously we found that large graphs would cause the ALEC JVM to crash due to running out of memory unless we configured it with a large enough heap. And for now we've addressed that by choosing to sacrifice performance when we're under memory pressure rather than uh, crashing the JVM and we're just doing that by discarding cached entries. Uh, the second problem that we're running into is that a uh, correlation tick can take a very long time to process if the graph is large enough, and that leads to uh, a larger latency between the time a fault originates and the time a fault can be correlated to other faults and added to a situation. And if that time is long enough, um, the user experience is impacted. So if you, you don't want to wait minutes and minutes um, from the time a fault's generated to when it's correlated into a situation. So to address these problems, the first angle I investigated is to limit the size of the graph that is being processed. Uh, for the purposes of comparing distances between faults, many of the vertices on the graph can be considered dead as long as they don't have a fault attached and don't contain more than one neighbor. And that means basically they would never be part of the shortest path between two faults. So you could imagine a graph where you have a node that has 100 interfaces on it, and only a few of those interfaces are connected to the rest of the network. When we go to process this node, those other interfaces that aren't connected to anything might as well be dropped from the, from the graph so that we don't have to calculate distance to them because we know they're not connected to anything, so there's no way they could be part of a path. Uh, so utilizing that dead vertex concept, we can filter the graph recursively before processing it, which can result in a significantly smaller effective graph for processing. And uh, depending on how dense the graph is and what their overall, the overall topology is, uh, it's reasonable to think that the majority of nodes in any graph could be dropped. And dropping nodes should have a linear impact on memory footprint and processing time. So if we can shrink the graph even by 50%, then we should be able to correlate twice as fast and use half the memory. The next thing I looked at was improving efficiency in the shortest path computations. So the implementation we're using solves the graph from a given vertex to all other vertexes in the graph. And technically, we should be able to stop solving as soon as we have found the shortest path uh, from the source vertex to the other vertexes with faults on them because we're never asking for the distance between a faulted vertex and a non-faulted vertex because we only care about comparing the distances between the alarms. Um, however, this is only a marginal improvement, so um, you'd likely still have to compute a large portion of the graph depending on the topology. 
Finally, I looked at speeding up the correlation process via computing distances in parallel. So the implementation of dbscan we're using is single threaded, and the only convenient way of speeding it up is to pre-compute and cache all the distances it will ask for so that the thread never uh, spends any time finding distances. Uh, once the distance computation is moved out of dbscan, we can then run it in parallel to obtain significant performance increases by utilizing more of the CPU. Uh, to do this, I needed to re-implement the Dijkstra's algorithm since the implementation we were previously using was not thread safe. Um, this is a look at the order of operations uh, in the current implementation of the dbscan engine. So every time a, a correlation tick occurs, the entire graph topology is passed off to the clustering process, and all the vertices with faults are compared to see if they should be clustered together. And at this point, the distances get computed for all of those vertices. And this is the new pipeline I've come up with. So now when a tick occurs, we take the current state of the graph and we create a filtered copy of it where all the dead vertices have been dropped. And then we pre-compute all the distances in parallel and cache the results. Uh, then the same clustering process takes the now filtered graph and performs clustering. And any of the distances it asks for will already be in memory. So the lookup will be really fast at this point. Uh, and these are some of the challenges I faced uh, when working on this problem. So the main issue that I ran into is how to test and quantify results. Um, what I found is that even on the existing implementation, depending on the graph topology you look at and the density of the graph, you could have very different processing times. For example, with 500,000 vertices, I saw a time of four minutes and a time of eight minutes, depending on how I laid out the, the mock graph that I was using to test. So in reality, the best way to test this would be to get a dump of a real topology from a real network and test directly against that to see how it behaves in the real world. And I would also like to know what the worst case and best case improvements look like, which would vary depending on the graph as well. And then uh, finally, determining how much memory we're actually saving by filtering the graph is a challenge. Uh, that is also graph dependent, but I suspect in most cases it's going to be better than 50%. OK, so what results did I actually see? So I did end up getting uh, a dump of a real uh, network topology uh, this morning and tested against that. So I did have a hard time testing previously against my uh, mock topologies because I was just generating basically random topologies. And I could get results all over the place. And it was hard to um, come up with a topology that's actually fair because depending on how many vertices that you could have dead in the graph, it might. Uh, unfairly advantage the, the new implementation. So uh, with a graph of 250,000 vertices uh, and with a new implementation, it filters that down to 23,000 vertices, which is a 90% reduction. So that alone is going to be a 10 times uh, reduction in memory footprint and a 10 times increase in uh, performance. And then uh, so when I added filtering, we went from 140 seconds of processing on a 250,000 vertice graph down to 14 seconds. And then once I added in the uh, parallel computing of the distances ahead of time, then we went down to three seconds. So we basically got uh, 47 times better for performance. So two minutes and 20 seconds. Exactly. And this is on our real world topology taken directly from uh, an existing customer network. So this is, I think this is a pretty fair representation of um, what we'd be correlating usually. Is there any thought to we just cache this correlation so we don't have to do it any time, and then we just consume messages from the topology and only run this when the topology changes? Uh, it's funny you should say that <laughs> because that's Not one really. of the <laughs> that's one of the things I was thinking about. Um, so here's some things I've thought about that could be looked at for potential improvements if we wanted to go further. Um, so rather than filtering the graph and computing the distances on every tick, maybe there's a way to do it in real time as the graph changes rather than all at once on, uh, on a tick. Um, I don't know how feasible that is because um, technically you have to recompute everything as soon as a new inventory and new links come on because that might now be the shortest path for everybody or from one site to another site, which might affect a lot of vertices. So I don't know if there's any actual practical speed up to be had there, but maybe. Um, it might also be possible to uh, alter the distance algorithm to stop searching for a shortest path after reaching some distance from the source node 
because at a certain point we could say that nodes are too far apart. So if we have a fault in one site and a fault in another site and they're many, many, many hops apart and we know conceptually that we would never have them be part of the same situation, if we could add that to the algorithm so it stops computing any path once it's reached some maximal number of hops, for instance, then that could um, save us a lot of time as well. I did an example with the VUCM where you showed that the distance was so much heavier, the weight on the distance was so much greater than the time. So you, like you said, if, if, if you were two hops away, you would never have a correlate. Right. So you could sit there and say... Yeah, so this is taking that same concept and then using that logic to not even bother computing the distance once we've once we've gotten to a certain distance away. Uh, another thing we could look at is distributing the distance computation, and that would allow us to scale horizontally. Um, the implication there is that we'd ha then have to share the graph between uh, all the computing instances. And even using the uh, existing implementation, or my improved implementation in this case, um, we, could, we, could, uh, we could distribute that, and we could gain um, a significant increase that way even though it's only taking three seconds now, so that might not be worth doing. Um, and if we were going to distribute the problem, there's might also be other algorithms that we can investigate to take better advantage of the fact that we're distributed um, and perhaps integrating the uh, concept of like a maximal hop or maximal distance way determining searching early. Um, so what I'm taking away from this DevGM project. At the very least, now I better understand where the performance bottlenecks are in the clustering engine. Uh, when I first started, I was hoping to see something like a five times improvement in performance, but it looks like in reality, we could get significantly better than that. And we can get away with a, a smaller heap size and scale better vertically compared to the existing implementation. Um, one thing I noted was that when I'm testing the existing implementation on a large graph, um, say you you're on a system with uh, 32 cores, for instance, um, during the, the compute uh, for all the distances, all the cores are just setting, sitting idle because it's single threaded. You've just got one thread working away. Uh, with the new implementation, you can max out basically all the cores you have on the system to gain a time advantage that way. Uh, another thing is I, just like five minutes ago while I was sitting here, I fixed a problem uh, in my implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm that was giving a really poor, poor performance. So I fixed that and that's how I got uh, the latest speed increases. So uh, I think that that needs a little bit more battle testing just to make sure that it's all all good uh, before we can before we can say it really works that way. Um, and if that all looks good, I think it should be an easy drop in replacement for the existing implementation uh, that would improve both memory footprint and correlation latency. Um, overall, there's actually not that many changes, so it's it's like a fairly small contain uh, self-contained code change set. So. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, that's everything.